there are lots of images that you might be working on where you need to make very selective adjustments across the entire photo. This image is a wonderful example. We have a sky, a mountain, and a lake, and all three of those different elements need to be edited individually. Inside Perfect Effects, you have access to something called the adjustment brush or the adjustable gradient, and the ability to mask in and out certain parts of your image where you wanna make specific adjustments to. So you can take a photo like this one and end up with an image like this one. Let me go ahead and show you how it works inside Perfect Effects. On the right hand side of the screen in my filter stack, down at the bottom there are two icons. The adjustment brush is on the left, and the adjustable gradient is on the right. There are two different types of masking techniques to achieve the same result. Let's go ahead and start out with the adjustable gradient, and I'll talk you through the basics of masking here inside Perfect Effects. We'll go ahead and click on the icon. It'll apply something called a masking bug to our image, and then down below in the filter options pane, you'll see that the lighten preset right on the top left-hand side has been selected. That means the adjustment that we're making to a certain part of our image is to lighten it. Now the masking bug in the center of our photo is controlled by the center dot, which I can click and drag around. You'll notice that anywhere that I move this bug, on the top, the image is getting lighter, and on the bottom, it's staying the same. I can rotate this by clicking on the compass button on the left-hand side. And when I do so, you'll get a live preview of where this mask is going. You'll see now, anywhere on the right-hand side is getting lighter, and the left-hand side is remaining dark. Let's go ahead and rotate this so that the bottom will get lighter. There are also dotted lines on the top and the bottom. This adjusts the feathering amount. I can drag these lines in to create a straight line between the top and the bottom, or I can drag them out to create a very soft edge so that it has a greater gradient between the top and the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and drag these down towards the center a little bit more. And let's go ahead and click and drag the masking bug to where the horizon line is on the left-hand side of our image. Once you have the masking bug in place, on the right-hand side in the filter options pane, we can actually make more adjustments to the area that we've chosen. This is one of my favorite parts about using perfect effects and the adjustable gradient. Not only can we do things like lighten the bottom, but we can also add contrast. We can go in and add detail. We can adjust the color. Let's go ahead and cool the bottom down a little bit as well as add some vibrance. We'll move that slider over to the right and really pump up the color down below. And we can even go in and add things like a glow. Glows work really well on water, so I'll go through and add a very subtle, soft light and glow. Back up above in our filter stack, you'll see that there's a representation of the mask we just created as a thumbnail right next to our layer. It's indicated by a black top and a white bottom. The black indicates that we are concealing the top half of our photo so that it isn't affected by the changes in our filter options pane. The white on the bottom half of that thumbnail indicates that we are revealing the changes that we just created. And that's a good way to remember how masking works. Anytime that you apply an adjustable gradient onto your image, it can always be edited using the masking brush. You'll see that because we applied the masking bug, which is always editable as long as you have your image open inside Perfect Effects, that there is a small bit of the mountain right at the bottom that's also being lightened, it has contrast applied, it has color adjustments applied and glow, and we definitely don't want that. The masking bug was a great starting point, but we need to finish this mask off with our masking brush. So let's go over to the top left-hand corner of our screen and select in our tool well the masking brush. In the tool options bar, you've got quite a few changes that you can make to your brush. The most important will be your mode drop-down menu, and you have two options here. You can paint out and remove a filter, or you can paint it in. We need to make sure we choose paint out because we need to remove all of the filter that's being applied on the bottom part of the mountain. 
You can also change things like the size. Our brush is a little big, so let's take the size and move it down to the left, make it a little bit smaller. You can also change things such as the feathering amount, so the softness around the edge of the brush, and the opacity or the transparency of the brush. The last option is one of my favorites, and it's called the Perfect Brush. This is our edge detection tool, and it pays attention to color information on your photo to help make sure that you make very exact masks. And we can go ahead and turn that on if we'd like. Now that I'm ready, all I need to do is click and drag over the area that I need to remove the effect from, and it will get rid of it. So we're just clicking and dragging over the bottom of the mountain. Let's go ahead and make sure we get all of that little sliver right there, and that is much better. Back on the right hand side in the filter stack, there's also the adjustment brush. Instead of starting out with a masking bug, you can actually just start out with the brush tool if you need to make a very intricate and specific mask. So let's go ahead and click on that option. It will automatically apply another filter in your filter stack so that you don't destroy that great adjustable gradient layer that you just created. Now with the adjustment brush, it starts out with a black mask. That means it's concealing the entire photo from any changes that might happen until we choose and paint them in. This is a great opportunity to go down to the filter options pane and make some adjustments first. We're going to go in and paint lightness, warmth, and detail on the mountain all at once. So let's go ahead and go into our filter options pane and make those changes now. It's already added some lightness, but I'm going to go in and add some detail with my detail slider. And I'm going to take my warmth slider and move that over a couple points, as well as my vibrance slider. These are completely different adjustments than the last layer that we created. And this is one of the plus sides of using adjustment brush and adjustable gradient layers. Now that we're all set, let's just go in and click and paint over our mountain. And because we have the perfect brush selected, I'm not worried about going over the edge of my mountain. There's good color differentiation between the top and the bottom of our mountain there. So we'll just click and drag, make sure we get all of the areas that we really want to adjust. And that's already looking a lot better. Now, just in case you go through and you paint along the bottom and you realize that you make a mistake, you also have the ability to undo a brush stroke that you don't like. You can go up to the edit menu at the top of your screen and select undo, or you can press control or command Z. If you make multiple mistakes, so let's go through and make a couple of different brush strokes that all are bad, you can press the undo button multiple times and remove multiple brush strokes. The last tip that's very helpful for using the masking brush tool are the left and right hand bracket keys. If you use the right bracket key, it will make the brush larger. And if you use the left bracket key, it will make the brush smaller you can get into very tiny, intricate little spaces with a small masking brush. And by using the bracket keys, you can make quick changes without having to constantly go back up to your tool options bar. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about when using masks is being able to copy and reuse masks as well as invert them. Copying masks and pasting them on another layer is very useful. On the right hand side, in my filter stack, we just created this very, very perfect mask around the mountain. And I want to be able to reuse that wonderful line that we created right along the top because we need to make an adjustment to the sky. Instead of having to go back and repaint all of this all over again, we're going to copy the mask and reuse it. Up in the mask drop down menu at the top of your screen, scroll down and choose copy mask. It's not going to do anything yet because we'll need to paste it on another layer. I'm going to go back down to my filter stack and click on another adjustment brush layer. It won't make any changes because it has a black mask. And then we'll go up to our mask drop down menu and choose paste mask. 
Now what it's done is it pasted the exact mask from our last layer, so it's adding adjustments to the mountain. We need to do the opposite. Instead of having to start again from scratch, which we really don't want to do, go up to the tool options bar on the right hand side when you have your masking brush chosen and click the invert button. It is going to let you know that if you're using a masking bug and inverting a mask that you won't be able to edit that masking bug any longer. We don't need to worry about this, so we'll go ahead and click OK. Now it's concealing changes on the mountain and revealing them on the sky as well as the lake. Just in case you don't have your masking brush selected, you can always choose the invert option up in the mask drop-down menu by selecting invert mask. You can also press control or command I. Now because we want to just make changes to our sky, we need to paint out the lake on the bottom. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit larger. I'll check to make sure that my mode is set to paint out because we need to remove the bottom half and then I'll click and drag. You don't have to leave the perfect brush on if you don't want to. So we could go up and turn it off if we need to have a freehand brush. Now once we've gone through and we've created our mask, we can make our last adjustments to the sky. In the filter options pane, we don't want to lighten the sky too much, so I'm going to drop the brightness slider down really far. I'm going to take the contrast slider and move that over to the right. I'll take the compression slider and move that over to the right. This will help reveal some of the highlight detail in the clouds. So we'll scoot that over just a little bit. I'll take the detail slider and move that over a couple of points. And then I'll also take the color section and add some coolness and some vibrance. The last option that can be really nice for clouds is to add a soft glow. So I'll go ahead and take that glow slider and move that over to the right. Once again, because we made such unique adjustments to the sky, we wanted to keep those adjustments separate from the mountain and the lake. Up in the filter stack, we have three very unique masked layers. Each one is individual, but they all respond to one another and you can do things like copy, paste, and invert masks to make this process a lot easier and faster. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after image. Our original photo was flat. We needed to make very specific changes to the sky, the mountain, and the lake. And just by using our masking tools here inside Perfect Effects, we were able to do that and create a photo like this one.